Hi everyone, my name is Sue Yang, and today I'm going to talk about CacheSec, lies admission optimization for Google Data Center Flash caches. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about Colossus Flash Cache. Lai is the general purpose flash cache service for Colossus. And it works as an index server, so that means uh, if I'm a user and I want to access my data, then first of all, I will send a request to the cache index server to see the data is cached or not. And if the data is cached, then the index server will reply the cache location in Colossus. And if it is a cache miss, then I have to write, uh, read the data from HDD. And this service is fully decentralized. Uh, each index server is a fraction of the key space by hash. So any single failure will not affect the other cache servers. And the main goal of the <laughs> Colossal Flash Cache is to reduce the overall disk risk or spin nodes. The latency is often improved, but it's not guaranteed. And uh, this service serves many uh, widely used Google services like Bigtable, Spanner, BigQuery, and F1, and much more. Okay, then let's talk about CacheSec. That is the admission algorithm for Colossal Flash Cache. And compared to a RAN cache, we need to additionally consider the following issue related to Flash. The first one is write amplification. And the second one is the write endurance. And we also need to consider how can we cache the data that are only accessed a few times. And the last one is Colossus specific. That is the existence of Colossus buffer cache. But in general, if you have a hierarchical caching system, you will have the similar issue. OK, so let's talk about all this one by one. OK, so first of all, write amplification. What is write amplification? That means when you want to write the data to a flash block, then first of all, you need to move the live part of the block to somewhere else. And the extra write will uh, reduce the flash performance and reduce the flash lifetime. And why this is related to, related to a flash cache? Because typically, you will have the non-sequential evictions. For example, the classic one, LRU. And the non-sequential eviction will give you a very fragmented uh, cache space. That means you have a very serious uh, write amplification issue. And to mitigate this problem, uh, actually, we use the approximate LRU eviction strategy. So the cache is a 5 queue of main, many 1 gigabyte containers of the cache box. And when we evict the container at the tail of the queue, we will recycle the hard block and reinsert them to the head of the queue. And we did an uh, extensive study, and we found that the aggregated behavior of this approximate LRU strategy is very similar to the true LRU eviction. And the idea here is that we want to keep the eviction simple because we have the issue of write application, and we focus on the admission optimization which is the cache stack. OK, then let's talk about write endurance. Because Flash has limited write endurance, so that means you cannot just simply write everything to the Flash cache. And the observation is the following. We found that the majority of our data are only SS ones. So they are not cacheable at all. And if this is the case, we can use an algorithm called lock, that's lazy adaptive replacement cache. It is a very simple but very powerful uh, idea. It says that, OK, if this is the case, then we just admit any data at the second time. So on every one access data will be excluded. And actually, lock was the previous admission control we used to reduce the return byte to flash and also avoid the cache pollution. OK, but lock has its own issue. The most obvious issue is that if you always admit the data at the second time, that means you always miss the first cache hit. And this becomes a big problem if the data is accessed only a few times. 
because you always miss the first cache hit. And we have this problem uh, in some of our biggest uh, applications. And in the past, our workaround is we will manually monitor our workloads. And whenever we find this issue, we will manually turn off the lock for that workload. This is a true manual process. And obviously, now we have more and more users, then uh, this manual monitoring and maintenance is not feasible. OK, then let's talk about Corsa's uh, buffer cache. That is the RAM buffer cache in the HD servers. OK, so that means if I have an SS, and the SS is a cache me in the flash cache, but it is a cache hit in a buffer cache, then I don't cause any extra disk rate. I'm still safe. And because uh, this exists long before the existence of Corsa buffer cache, many workloads already uh, heavily utilize this buffer cache. And why this is related to, to our uh, flash cache? Because it's possible that if you don't design your uh, flash cache algorithm carefully, then you can find the issue that you can have a cache algorithm that gives you a very high cache hit rate. But uh, you also have a very high uh, disk read rate. So the high, disk, uh, high cache hit rate won't help you at all. OK, then let's talk about the cache stack model. That is the admission optimization to minimize the overall cost of disk reads and the flash write. And what we want to do is the following. We want to partition our traffic into several categories. And what do you mean by a category? For example, in Bigtable or Spanner, a category is a locality group or a called column family of a table. And we also have different admission policies by their aggressiveness. For example, we have admin on means, not just a simple LIU. And we also have admin on second means, that's lock. Or we can do it in a very aggressive way, that's admin on write. That means when you write the data to HDD, you at the same time will put the same copy in the flash cache. And of course, we can do, we can just say, OK, I don't want to write anything to the cache. That's never a thing. Now you have many categories, and you have some <coughs> admission policies. Then the reasonable way is I want to apply a more aggressive policy to a more cacheable category. That sounds reasonable. But how can we do that in a quantitative way? Then we have to formulate a knapsack problem. So given the cache size, I want to choose the admission policy per category to minimize my overall cost. OK, so before we go to the optimization, we need to have a model. So let's use simple LIU or admin on this as an example. Now say you have a block, then you can have all its access times, T1, T2, T3, and so on. And once you have the access times, you can compute all the inter-arrival times, not just ti minus ti minus 1. Now, let's assume that we know the cache uh, retention time, that's capital D. That is the duration of the block that can stay in an LRU cache without any SSEs. Then once you define this quantity, you can classify all your inter-arrival times. First, if your interval arrival time less than the retention time, that means the access arrived before the data leaves the cache. So that is the cache hit. And because this is an LRU cache, you will move the block to the head of the queue. On the other hand, if the interval arrival time is greater than the cache retention time, then uh, your access arrived after the block leaves the cache. That's a cache miss. And if this is a simple LRU, that means whenever you have a cache miss, you should write the data to the flash. That causes the flash write. And remember, we have the colossal buffer cache. So whenever we have a cache miss in flash cache, we also run the buffer cache simulator to see whether it is also a cache miss in buffer cache. 
OK, then let's talk about the optimization. So by doing this model, we can compute all the quantities we want, the spindle, the disk reads, uh, the fresh write, and also the cache usage. And then we additionally allow fractional policies. That means in the same category, I, for example, I can apply lock to 30% of the block in this category, and then apply never a limit to another 10% of the block in the same category, so on and so forth. Then I can formulate a fractional knapsack problem. So what I want to do is to find the optimal fraction per policy per category to minimize the overall cost. In this case, that's the disk read plus the written bytes with the cache capacity constraint. And the good thing here is the fractional knapsack can be solved very efficiently by using a greedy algorithm that is in contrast to the combinatorial knapsack that is NP-hard. OK, so this sounds very nice. But the problem is that the fractional knapsack problem only for the given cache retention time. But in reality, how come you can know the cache retention time in advance? So <coughs> to find the global optimal, you need to solve the same knapsack problem for all the possible cache retention times. And in production, we have 127 uh, cache retention times from 15 minutes to 16 days with 6% increments. And in the past, we also try 255 cache retention times, this is 3% increment. So you have a better granularity. And we found that uh, two have very similar results. So we go with the last values because you just use half a rent. OK, so uh, we have uh, put this in production. So CAPSEC is also fully decentralized. It requires only the information received by a single index server. And the failure of a single server won't impact others. And because uh, we can solve the knapsack problem very efficiently, it can run in real time and just use a fraction of the resource of an index server. And to get the Intel arrival times, we have a ghost cache, that is a lookup table for the, all the last access time of every data entry. Okay. And we run the entire optimization every five, uh, five minutes and use the latest result to make the admission decisions. OK, lesson learned. Uh, we found a few things. First of all, uh, we found that if uh, we say, we tell the user that uh, this will be, all the configuration will be done automatically, then we found that users are more willing to use our service. Uh, and second, uh, this experiment infrastructure uh, greatly helped the feature development because the entire system is fully decentralized. So that means I can always use a small set of cache index server to run my experience in production. And no matter what I did, I won't scoop up the entire system. And actually, uh, before the full deployment, we run the cache stack as an experiment <coughs> for a few months. And most of the issues were identified during that stage. And finally, uh, this model is highly introspectable. So that means uh, the DVs and SIE can fully understand the model. So after the initial deployment, and we just give everything to them, and the new, new feature and the maintenance are totally done by them without any assistance from us. OK, then let's see uh, the comparison in production. As I say, uh, this is a fully decentralized system. So each index server represents a fraction of the key space by hash. Then we can compare all the algorithms simultaneously by running them uh, in different cache index servers. OK, and we run all the experiment for a week. Uh, we compare three different algorithms, the cache stack, the simple LRU, and the lock. And as you can see, uh, cache stack will give you the lowest disk read and also the lowest written byte to flash. So it has the lowest overall cost. And one interesting thing here is that if you look at uh, admin on miss, that's a simple LRU, it gives the highest hit, hit, uh, cache hit ratio. 
in flash cache, but it also gives you the worst outcome. This is because of the colossal buffer cache. So many of its cache sheets are actually not useful at all. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, CAPSEC improved the overall cost of colossal buffer, uh, colossal flash cache by 6.5%. This is one week average compared to lock. And the automation are done automatically and dynamically. So we just deprecate all the uh, manual monitoring and maintenance. And we also have some heuristic based hand tuning rule in the code base. And after the full deployment, we also deprecate them. And it becomes the foundation of many ongoing optimization. For example, the spatial prefetching uh, for course flash cache. And this is my talk today, and I'm happy to answer any questions.